Hello, Bees Bladers, and welcome newcomers. You found the right channel for weekly knife content, unboxings, overviews, and reviews. A huge thank you to all my subscribers. Um, everyone that commented on the giveaway announcement and entry videos, I got a lot of outstanding feedback from you all. I'll be at Blade Show this weekend, see what's out there, and I'll be sharing whatever I learn, and I hope to pick up some good swag to give away. Um, I'll have separate giveaways for my patrons once I get a few more signed up. And guess what? Bees Blade stickers are on the way. All right. So back to the subject at hand. I've carried and used this version of the Brazen for eh, about a month or so now. And by version, I mean the 14C28 Sandvik Steel. Um, it's very nice. Um, we'll go over the nice, very nice, not so nice aspects in my humble opinion of this knife. So I'm going to show you both sides. Now, if you want the more uh, technical um, aspects and the measurements and specifications, I do things a little different on this channel. So if you want to see the more technical stuff, go to my unboxing and overview and check that out. Then come back here because this is where I'm going to tell you how I, how I carried it, what I feel about it, and my experience with the knife. Um, so please support the channel by joining me on Patreon so we can have better more knife content to share together and more giveaways. Uh, there's perks to being a patron, so click on the link in the description and check it out. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Bees Blades, and you can also contact me on email, beesblades at gmail.com. So here's this side, and oh my gosh, look what happened today. I dropped this on the kitchen floor. The ceramic tile is okay, but, oh no, would you look at it? Would you just look at it? So, yeah, that happened. But you know what? I'll live. I'll be all right. I'll be okay. I mean, I'm not planning on getting rid of the knife anyway. I'm going to use this. This is a good working knife. I've carried it a lot in the last month, so I'm sure I'll get over it. You know, I might toss and turn a little bit tonight, but there's nothing I can do about it now, right? So that's, that's a little, eh, but I'll live. Uh, I will put my measurements in the description below along with links to where you can get this knife. And there's many variations. Um, now be careful. If you go and find it and say, yep, that's the one I want, make sure you check. One's going to be D2. The other one's going to be the 14C28N. So make sure you've decided which steel you want to get before you go ahead and click the button and buy it. Um, I don't particularly recommend one over the other. Each has its own its own use. Me personally, with sharpening so far, I'm I'm liking the edge that I can get on the 14C28. I mean, I can sharpen this stuff to a laser beam. It's so sharp. I love it, sharpening-wise. I can sharpen the D2 really sharp, too. But so far, I think uh, this is my favorite. That doesn't mean that uh, it just not ha doesn't have anything to do with the way I sharpen or my style of sharpening. So here's a couple things to mention. The weight is 3.77 ounces, and these are my weights and measurements. The total knife length is eight inches from a tip to tip. The blade and sharpened edge are both three and a half inches. The closed length is four and a half from here to here. Your blade stock thickness is three millimeters or 0.12. And just a comparison here is the Spyderco pair of three. So they're pretty close. And here's the Civiti Ortis. A lot of folks have the Ortis. The Ortis might be just a little, just a tad thicker. And here's another one. A lot of you guys have this one. I love this knife, the Pilar 3. Love it. So there's a comparison for those. They're pretty much just about the same. If you're still watching and you enjoy knife content, new knife content, at least twice a week, please give this video a thumbs up, smash the subscribe button, crush the bell button, that way you get notified of new content. Liking the video and being a part of the conversation in the comments lets YouTube know that, uh, you know, it lets them know other knife lovers may want to watch and check out this channel or, or its content. I save the groveling to only once per video, so please subscribe now before you forget. I'll thank you. Thank you very much. So as far as the ergos go, I'm going to back out a little bit here for you. It's really comfortable in the hand. I mean, it feels really good. Um, I have no issues when I'm cutting. Um, there, the deep carry pocket clip right here, right here, you can feel it a little bit depending on what cut you're doing and how you're cutting. 
So, you know, if I'm just sitting here squeezing it, yes, I'm definitely feeling it. But if I'm doing a push cut, you know, I'm using my, I'm using the, my thumb in the front of my hand more when I'm pushing down and cutting. And when I'm doing a pull cut like this, that's when I'll notice it back here a little bit. It's a little bit of, you know, if you're doing a lot of cutting, this edge right here, I think even more so than the pocket clip, you can feel a little bit. But, you know, this isn't a hard use, heavy duty cutter. This is an everyday carry knife, a really nice everyday carry knife. So that's just a subjective thing. I don't have any issues with the with any of the jimping, like as far as right here, your uh, flipper tab. It's just enough. It's really good. I mean, look at the action on there. But the flipper tab, not a problem with that. And then the, the jimping in here in your liner, it's relatively soft. It does not grab your finger. It's not sharp. So I don't really have a problem with that. Man, the, the lockup on the opening, listen to the acoustics. It's very nice. And the close. Here's, it's very nice. And as far as the thumb studs, thumbs, the thumb studs work great. I mean, it's, it's pow, right in the kisser. Pow, right in the kisser. Now, if you guys aren't familiar, if you are used to just opening with your thumb, give this a try. Try a pinch. Do this number. And watch. It just flies open with almost no effort at all. Just barely. And it just, it just... All you have to do is close your fingers and it opens. So that's something you might want to try because, I mean, it just makes it really easy. Just one of those little tips and tricks. Now, I guess before I forget, let me do a couple uh, comparisons. That way, if you have one of these knives, this will give you an idea. Here's the Spyderco Manix 2. And I'll just fly through some of these real quick for you to give you an idea of the size. And here's the Civivi Ortis. Now, the Ortis is more, more in line. It's a little smaller. I'll just run through a few here. That way, if you have one of these knives, you'll have an idea of how big the brazen is in real life. There's the Spyderco Pair 3. And here's another one. Here's the Sincut Scepter. I'm just going to run through these real quick. And the Pilar 3. Love this knife. Freaking love it. There's the Pilar 3. And, of course, the Tenacious. The Tenacious. Man, I got the Tenacious and I was like, whoa, what's this whole $50 knife range thing? No more gas station knives for me, right? We'll do one more. Here's the Riffle. Pretty close. Pretty close. So, I mean, this knife, it carries really nice in the pocket. It's lightweight. The deep carry clip leaves like nothing to be desired. It performs well. I've carried it in my waistband while you know while wearing swim shorts, basketball shorts, jeans. Um, I even took it to the beach, took it on vacation, um, clean clean up the cleaned up the blade. You can see the blade looks absolutely fine. It looks great. They put a really good stone wash on it, so I have no complaints there. I mean, overall, I mean I have a lot of good to say about this knife. Uh, the factory edge has a little more obtuse angle, which uh, makes it a little tougher. You know, by obtuse, it's more like this instead of like this. So when you have a more obtuse angle, it's going to be tougher. It's going to keep its edge longer. When you have a thinner, thinner profile like this, it's going to be a lot slicier, but it's going to dull a little quicker. So a different knife for different tasks. I'm going to, I'm going to, all I've done is done some touch-ups. I have not reprofiled or, or even really had to sharpen it. I've just ran it across the, the fine diamond grit just a few times to clean it up and then some strop. And, you know, I don't, I don't use all of my knives for hard use. You know, the Manix 2, I use this dude for hard use, as you can see. And all of this will clean off. This is just grime from working out in the yard today. The edge geometry on this one, it's pretty good. You know, even cutting through, you know, really, really hard leather, you guys have seen me do, it does a good job at that. Not as well as the thinner profile, uh, you know, edges, but that's not a problem. As far as acoustics, you know, it sounds great. I don't have any problem with that. The full liners take away that tinky sound, so I appreciate that a lot. The locking and close-up sound really good. Um, I would have preferred a full finger choil. This is, you know, kind of a half A finger choil. It, maybe if you're doing some light stuff, but I definitely would not take a full grip on that bad boy because 
you're getting right into the edge. And here's another little complaint. You can see you're going to end up with a smile right here when you sharpen it. See there where where the the blade drops down that you're going to you're going to end up sharpening up in here. So I wish there was more of a sharpening choil, but that's just that's a minor thing. That's not a big deal. I mean, most of the knives that have a plunge grind, they just don't have much of a sharpening choil anyway. You know, see it goes the plunge grind goes all the way to the freaking edge. But that's fine. Um Overall, I completely recommend this knife. It's lightweight, has nice ergos, it fits nice in the hand, it feels solid, it doesn't feel cheap, it has great action. I mean, it's just drop shutty, has great deployment. I think the price point is pretty much on par for a budget knife, depending on whose budget you're talking about. But I'm not going to ramble on like I usually do because I have a lot to do before the end of the day. Uh, thanks for stopping by. If you have any questions, Hit me up in the comments. You can always direct message me on Instagram. Um, you guys have a great rest of your day. Be careful and don't cut yourself.